OpenAI just dropped GPT-5 Codex. If you thought Codex was a great product, now it's powered by GPT-5. It was only a matter of time. So if you click the little get started button, look at this, VS Code, Cursor, Winsor, VS Code Marketplace, Codex Web. Today we're releasing GPT-5 Codex, a version of GPT-5 further optimized for agentic coding in Codex. It was trained with a focus on real world software engineering work. It's equally proficient at quick interactive sessions and at independently powering through long complex tasks. And its code review capability can catch critical bugs before they ship. And you don't have to use Codex directly in the ChatGPT interface, it goes wherever you want. Codex now works where you develop, in your terminal or IDE, on the web, in GitHub, and even in the ChatGPT iOS app. It's included with ChatGPT Plus, Pro, Business, EDU, and Enterprise plans. All right, so here are some benchmarks. Here is Sweebench Verified. And as you can see, GPT-5 High, 72.8. GPT-5 Codex High, 74.5. So a couple point bump, not enormous, but definitely an improvement. Code refactoring, a massive improvement. GPT-5 High, 33.9. GPT-5 Codex High, 51.3%. We've been talking a lot about long running tasks. Replit just announced that their Agents 3 product goes for 200 plus minutes. But listen to this. During testing, we've seen GPT-5 Codex work independently for more than seven hours at a time on large, complex tasks, iterating on its implementation, fixing test failures, and ultimately delivering a successful implementation. Seven hours, that's nuts. So I think there's two factors here, and I've been speaking about this a lot over the last week. The amount of time that an agent can work autonomously successfully is really important, but it's also important how quickly they get work done within that time frame. So if Codex is able to think for seven hours and get something done, that's great. But if it's able to think for seven hours and get more done, that's also great. So there's really two levers at work here, how long it can go for and how much it can get done within that length of time. So more on how Codex actually works. So we see that for the bottom 10% of user turns sorted by model generated tokens, GPT-5 Codex uses 93.7 fewer tokens than GPT-5 and conversely for the top 10%, so the more complex use cases, it thinks more spending twice as long reasoning, editing, and testing code and iterating. GPT-5 Codex has been trained specifically for conducting code reviews and finding critical flaws. When reviewing and navigate your code base, reasons through dependencies and runs your code and tests in order to validate validate correctness. So check this out, more benchmarks of GPT-5 versus GPT-5 Codex. So this is incorrect comments, 13.7% of the time for GPT-5 high and only 4.4% for GPT-5 Codex. High impact comments, GPT-5 high, 39.4, and GPT-5 Codex high, 52.4. And we all know AI loves to comment. So high impact comments, very important. And comments per PR it's actually lower, which is good because I don't want overly commented code. It's not necessary. I want the right comment at the right time. And if you want to try out GPT-5 Codex right now, do it with the sponsor of today's video, Windsurf. Windsurf is today's most powerful agentic IDE where developers are carrying out their best work. From solo projects from tinkers all the way up to enterprise organizations with millions of lines of code. Windsurf is built to keep you moving fast, but without sacrificing security. Especially after being acquired by Cognition, the creators of Devon, the Windsurf team seems to be shipping faster than ever. Windsurf is faster, it's also gotten a makeover, and it's more reliable. They also ship features like Deep Wiki and vibe and replace. Windsurf also comes with a one-click MCP store and a really sophisticated memory feature. And now a deep integration with Devon makes it even more powerful. If you've watched this channel at all, you know I'm a fan of Windsurf, so definitely check them out. I'll drop a link down below. Thanks again to Windsurf for sponsoring this video. Now back to the video. So Codex CLI has also been updated. The terminal UI now has tool calls and diffs that are better formatted and easier to follow. Approval modes are simplified to three levels, read only with explicit approvals, auto with full workplace access, but requiring approvals outside of the workspace, and full access with the ability to read files anywhere and run commands 
with network access. It also supports compact and conversation state to make longer sessions easier to manage. And as I mentioned, it's now available wherever you develop. It has a new IDE extension and GitHub integration. They've also improved their cloud infrastructure performance. By caching containers, we've slashed the medium completion time for new tasks and follow-ups by 90%. I always thought that speed is highly underappreciated. Everybody wants quality, obviously, but speed is nearly as important. And now you're getting 90% lower latency. It now also automatically sets up its own environment by scanning for common setup scripts and executing them. And with configurable internet access can run commands like pip install to fetch dependencies as needed at runtime. Codex can spin up its own browser, look at what it built, iterate and attach a screenshot of the result to the task and GitHub PR. It also now comes with code review capabilities. So unlike static analysis tools, it matches the stated intent of a PR to the actual diff, reasons over the entire code base and dependencies, and executes code and tests to validate behavior. And this is kind of a dig at human reviewers. Only the most thorough human reviewers put this level of effort into every PR they review. So Codex fills the gap. So once turned on for a GitHub repo, Codex automatically reviews PRs as they move move from draft to ready, posting its analysis on the PR. You can also explicitly ask for a review by saying at codex review in a PR and give it extra guidance like review for security vulnerabilities. So at OpenAI, Codex now reviews the vast majority of their PRs, so they are dogfooding this completely, catching hundreds of issues every day, often before a human review begins. So definitely check this out. Let me know what you think. It's available for ChatGPT Plus, Pro, Business Educational, and Enterprise plans. This is an interesting way to price it. Plus, EDU and business seats can cover a few focus coding sessions each week. But Pro, which of course is $200 a month, can support a full work week across multiple projects. So it is literally like having an additional developer on your team. Business plans can purchase credits to enable developers to go beyond their included limits, while enterprise plans provide a shared credit pool so you can only pay for what your developers use. So I love it. I think this is awesome. Go try it out. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.